Hey everybody, so today is Friday and yesterday I actually went to my first business conference. It was called Next Women's Forum or something like that, but it was really informative, got some great resources, really glad I decided to buy a ticket to that. So I wasn't in the office all day yesterday because it was like an all day event and I went in to the office at around right before 9 to kind of prep for the next day so it was nine almost 9 p.m i was like let me just go and prep you know for today and i went in and the electricity was off and i was like okay what's going on but it was too late for me to call the electric company so this morning i just called them and pretty much what happened was i actually never had electricity turned on at this place even though i called to get it turned on so basically on June 1st, when I called to activate the electric in my name, so the electricity had actually never been turned off this whole time. So it was always on since the landlords showed me the property all the way till yesterday. And so on June 1st, I called to switch over the electricity. But on June 1st, they must have called also to turn off the electricity. So there was some conflicting um, signals, I guess, to the electric company. But you would think that it would be kind of organized by account number instead of address you know what I mean because they said that I called to activate the address and someone else called to deactivate the address so anyways they called after me on the same day to deactivate but then this whole time I had electricity and I thought it was kind of odd last month that I'd never got an electric bill and I thought and I even logged on to my account and it said zero and I was like, okay, maybe since I'm new, it just takes a while for you to get your first bill. That was my thought. And so I just kept moving along and I said, I'll get a bill eventually. And because I had an account and everything. But then the electricity got turned off and it turns out I actually never had an account. It never got turned on. So anyway, now I have to wait for the electricity to get turned on. So that happened. Could you imagine if I would have opened the store and then customers and then electricity gets turned off? How embarrassing. Anyways, um, yeah. I have a package today from our sponsor, Ana Luisa. So I'm gonna open it up. All right. So thank you, Ana Luisa, for sponsoring today's video. And let's see what we have. We have three pieces from them today. Oh my, oh! When I saw these online, I was like, I hope they send me those earrings. These are little snake earrings, perfect for Halloween, because I always at least do a little Slytherin outfit. You know how I am. I like to do my Slytherin outfit every year, so that will be perfect for that. And let's see what else we got. Ooh, and they kind of upgraded their packaging here. So one thing I like about Ana Luisa too is it's very like minimal packaging. So this is how it always comes to you. Just like this. Minimal. Um, cardboard box. Recyclable. And these are cloth. So these are really nice. You can just keep your jewelry in there or repurpose it for something else. And let's see. Ooh, we've got this little, I forgot what this was called, but I'll put it up. This green little stone here. That's cute. Okay, so my cat decided that he was just gonna be a daredevil and jump on the table. So, let's continue on. They actually sent me an extra piece of jewelry, I think. Did they? They did. So I really like green stones, like jades and greens. I think they look really good on my skin. And then they sent me another little chain here. How nice, how nice. Ooh, very nice. All right, you guys. So their pieces are also made from recycled, like the gold, and also they use diamonds that are from other pieces of jewelry so that they're not mining for new diamonds and new stones. So I really like that about this company too. So you all know I'm a big fan of Ana Luisa and they have been a huge supporter for my channel and I really appreciate them and I love the beautiful sustainable jewelry they have to offer. So if you all are interested in checking out Ana Luisa, you can click the link in my description. Thanks again and let's get back to the video. Apparently, even if my electric, so it varies by city, so not all cities require this and I had no idea. So apparently, even if your electricity is on in my city, just just to switch your name over 
um, you're going to need to get a permit. So any new person taking over an electric bill in the whatever um, business area, you need a permit. Now that's different for residential. Like when you're in residential, all you do is say, hey, I need electricity and they turn it on. So I had no idea that you needed a permit to turn on electricity remotely. So permit inspection, all of that, which, you know, I got the inspections done and everything. So I was just kind of confused because I never would have thought to get a permit for electricity that's already on. You know what I mean? So that was why the electricity turned off yesterday because my order was never completed. So I'm thinking like, you think when a new business, especially a small business moves into a city that you would have like some kind of resources or something, you know? So like a handbook, a website, a resource center of steps, you know, before steps to do when you first get into a small business. Cause I would have never known that. And there's no meeting that I know of. Like I, I don't, I've never seen, I guess you go to the city hall meetings. I have no idea, but there's not a specific meeting or resource that I'm aware of that like because I'm I would have just never thought that so I don't know I'm just having to learn everything the hard way here I am and I just emailed the city my permit right here I don't know how much this is going to cost anyways that's the situation and hopefully we can get the electricity on within the next day or so it's Friday too you guys it's Friday so if the um, permit permit department doesn't release the order then i won't be able to work in there the whole weekend so anyways all right guys bye hello everybody it is four o'clock i'm a little sweaty because it is really hot right now so how hot is that outside it's 99 is that what it is 99 outside yeah, so it's kind of hot, <laughs> but I just got done walking back from the post office and I feel so productive. Today I did all of my orders except for one that was just placed yesterday. So I'm just gonna do that one tomorrow. And I did three TikToks. Um, I don't know, it was just a really productive day so far. And my cat is meowing at me. Uh, I'm going to come and eat lunch. So I came home for lunch to take some uh, time for the afternoon to kind of chill. And then probably later this evening, I'm going to go back to the office and then do a few things. Um, we have to put some tile down. The tile just came in today and it is for my countertop. My cat is, this cat is so hungry, you guys. It's always wanting to eat stuff. So we're going to put some tile down on one of the countertops because the tile is this really ugly brown color so we're going to change it to a black and white tile to fit the aesthetic and then i'm going to start working on my art piece for the filming room which is going to be like a cake um, it's like a half cake and it's going to be on the wall it's going to be well in my mind i think it's going to be cool so far we did the foam cake we put that together the other day and then i'm going to lay the first bit of frosting on which is that real frosting, it's just like spackling. The first bit of that on and then decorate it at a later date, I guess, I don't know. But anyways, I wanna chill. It's almost four, it's actually 3.50, so I'm good on time. I think I'm gonna have a salad. A salad with some fruits, yes. Okay, I'm gonna make my lunch.
but I think I'm going to put on some classical music. I really like, so I like all sorts of music, you guys. Um, definitely do like classical. There's a time and place for a good classical. I like jazz. I like, I like a whole variety of music. Just don't, I think the only genres I'm not really partial to are like country and I would say majority of current pop music. I do like K-pop, but I'm not really one to listen to too much pop music. Um, but let me see. Let's get on our, let's see. Let's see what our boy Beethoven has for us. See, I hope he don't copyright me though. I don't even know how to spell Beethoven. Oh my God. Let me... everybody so I'm pretty much I think I'm done I'm done with the unicorn underpainting I think it turned out really cute I'm loving the shading um, I watched the video on how she kind of I've probably watched it like four times on how she kind of got the shading down and it was really informative and it helped me out a lot so the only color i used for this part of the session was just this white so you can see how much depth you can get from just like doing the whatever this is called again <laughs> this little you know orangey brown base and then it really helps to make like the 3d elements and stuff so i really had fun doing this i got a little bit of paint there but I'm sure I'll cover it up when I actually do the whole scenario but what do you guys think this is my first time kind of doing an oil painting I'm really loving it I'm really proud I'm just really proud of the, the face I just when you look at my sketches and you see how far I've come I mean this is a moment to celebrate so <laughs> I think it's so cool how you can just like I always thought painting and drawing was something that people just knew how to do naturally like I really did th think that for a lot of my life and then when I realized it's something you can learn I was like oh I can learn how to do that so this is supposed to be like a goat unicorn hybrid so that's why the face is kind of goaty and then you see the little goat so this is actually like a goat unicorn so but I'm really loving it. What do you guys think down below? Let me know if you guys are oil painters. I'm very interested in, you know, learning more about oil painting. But anyways, I'm going to stop here and let this dry. And then probably later on, I will, not later on, maybe in a couple days or so, I'll come back and do it at the next step. But look, I even kind of mimicked the, you know, the hair. I didn't want it to just look like straight lines, you know. So I tried to put, you know, hair and mimic the hair I don't know how I'm going to paint around this you know what I mean I because you're supposed to paint more in the background so like how am I supposed to paint around that but anyway <laughs> I'll figure it out I guess in that little class I'm I'm in so um yeah I really like this don't look at that I mean look at that come on now come on
Hello everyone, welcome to Wednesday. So today I am launching some new candles and for those of you who think I'm so organized and have everything so put together, I just decided at 6 a.m. what I'm gonna launch on launch day. So I was really thinking I wanted to launch my Sunday candles, which where is one? Okay, here's an example of the Sunday candle that I have been kind of working on for quite some time now. I would say many months ago, I would say four or five months ago, I thought of maybe doing a Sunday candle. Um, and of course, me, I want to make sure that they burn fully. I want to make sure they are, look good and also burn like, you know, like a candle. So it took me a long time to come up with this and I've been sitting on this idea for a while and I said I better just go ahead and launch it just quit trying to be perfect let me just launch it so I made the other day the Sunday candle and I thought okay I would start here but then I had also had this idea in my mind for quite a while and it is a custom Sunday candle so pretty much like build your own Sunday and this was another thought I had for what I could do at the storefront to make it really fun which was build your own Sunday. So you could come in and you could like pick out your candle or whatever or your scoops and put them in there and just make your own Sunday candle. And I thought, okay, I can do this online too. I can make, you know, um, a customized listing where people can pick their scoops and we can build a Sunday candle that they choose and then send it off. So that was, you know, my ideas. Now I was Originally, I didn't want to launch the build your own Sunday idea now, but I said, you know what? I better go ahead and do it. It's now or never. Let me just go ahead and launch the idea. I don't know what I'm waiting on. So this morning at 6 a.m., I woke up before the sun even came up because I just was thinking about this idea. So I sat in the living room and just kind of thought about how I would do this. But anyway, let me show you. So the idea is they can pick between a vanilla base or a chocolate base. So I picked some scoop scents that would really go with either vanilla or chocolate or whatever. And then the idea is you can pick out three scoops and then I put it in the candle and then it will look something like this. And then I'll top every candle with um, whipped cream, a cherry and the drizzle. So I'm really excited for this idea. I think it's really fun and unique and interactive way again for um, to make candles. So I'm launching it today. So by the time you're watching this video, it's probably already launched. Um, so I'm having to actually make and photograph the whole product before four, because I told people the launch would happen at 4 p.m. But it shouldn't be too bad, honestly. Um, I'm already on, it's noon, it's not even noon yet, but I'm already on scent number three, which is, I'm about to make my scoops for that. So scent number three. Um, so I'm starting off with just a few scents for the scoops, and then I have to build the listing in Shopify. So unfortunately in Shopify, you can only have three variations. So I have to make two different listings. Um, to make everything kind of work because we need three scoops and then also picking the base. So I'm going to make one listing for the base. Yeah. And I have to build everything out into Shopify as well before four, but I think I can do it. Plus I'm launching the sorting candle, which I have not photographed. Um, the candle's done, but I just haven't photographed it yet. So I'm gonna photograph that with everything else here. But anyway, that's what I'm doing. So I'm kind of in a rush, you guys. You can hear my phone going off. It's just a lot going on. So anyways, let me get back to work. To leave me. And I 
to see me because I'm in the break room and the break room does not have good lighting. Hello everybody. So it is currently three o'clock and I'm about to head out for the day because I have to go to the post office, USPS and UPS to drop off a wholesale order and I just got done with a meeting. So when that business conference I went to a couple weeks ago, I found out that you can get free business mentorship with SCORE, which is the company, the organization, I guess, because, um, but anyways, I just got off of a meeting with my mentor. So he was really helpful. He was an older man who worked, I guess, for marketing for Procter & Gamble. So he had a lot of experience with marketing and he just basically sat and listened to my story, listened to what goals I had and gave me some actionable tips that I need to, I guess, implement so that I can kind of get organized so we came up with me making a business plan because I've actually never made a business plan I've done planning for my business but I've never sat down and done like you know an actual business plan so I think that's something that I need to do so I can get more clarity on what exactly I need to pay attention to in my business and what I need to grow so that's something that I'm going to do because I have a lot of things I have the YouTube channel I have a podcast I have Candle Biz Academy I have a storefront I have Amazon I have Walmart I have my store it's just a lot so I really need to tackle what is really important, what's going to make the business grow, and really figure out from there. Um, we really talk about hiring because like I said, it, hiring is just, and he had, he explained it just like how I thought of it in my head. You know, when it comes to, you know, million dollar companies, Amazon, hiring people is no big deal. You can hire people left and right. But when you're a small business, hiring is really, really tough because all the money that you give to that person is like a big chunk of money. But you know, hiring people is just such a hard thing to tackle as a small business because whatever you put out, you really need to get your money, you know, back and then some. I guess you need to make your profit from whatever you put your money into. So hiring someone, of course, you need to hire people if you want to grow your business, but you need to make sure they're the right people so that you're not, you know, spending money on something that isn't going to give you a return on your investment, right? So that's one thing we talked about too, hiring people. Um, we talked about different options. We talked about temp agencies, virtual assistants, which I've done before, you know, um, 
being really realistic about, okay, if you pay someone minimum wage, what kind of work are you going to get compared to paying someone um, this type of wage? So we really did talk a lot about hiring and that aspect too. So it gave me a lot to think about. I was really grateful for that. So I'm going to put score.org down in the description if you're interested in business mentorship. It's totally free. Um, and they match you up with people who have already been successful in the business world. Like I said, this guy had been running his own marketing agency for 30 years. He worked with Procter & Gamble. He did all sorts of different marketing campaigns. So it was really nice to hear what he had to say. He talked about Google Analytics a little bit. Um, and then <laughs> we also talked a bit about, um, I mentioned how I was like, oh, I'm so lucky I started my YouTube channel when I did. And he said, and this is something that I've heard other people say too. There's no such thing as luck. It is just a combination of preparedness and seizing opportunities when they come along, which is totally true. And sometimes I like to downplay, you know, my accomplishments. And I know it took me a lot to get where I am. And he's exactly right. There is no such thing as being lucky, you know, especially in the business world. If I would have never done XYZ, I could have never gotten to this point. So it is just a matter of putting all the pieces in place so that you can um excel and reach your goals you know so that's something that i need to think about is what can i do now so that i can go take this business to where i want to take it which is where do i want to take this business i don't know so i'm working a lot on figuring out what steps to take next because as the business grows there's going to be a lot more investment and um, that is kind of scary too. Investing, spending money, hiring is a huge investment. So things to think about, things to think about. But anyways, I am off to drop off my wholesale order, drop off orders for the day. And maybe later on today, I can think of business plan, figuring out how to write a business plan, get some clarity on what I, what I need to do next. But I'm really excited, you guys. Um, yeah, so that's what's going on. Decisions